It's not about falling down. It's about how fast you can get up after you have fallen down. That's where the magic is. Discover what it takes to be a world-class entrepreneur. No success story ever happened without any struggle at the beginning. And how you can have it all from the greatest minds in business. Why do you think people give up when business gets tough? Welcome to the Woman Entrepreneur Podcast. Here is your host, international award-winning entrepreneur and founder of Woman Entrepreneur, Erna Vassan. is Erna Bassan and welcome to the Woman Entrepreneur Podcast and today we have a very special guest on the show. Not only is he an amazing business coach, he plays the flute and he is a world-renowned speaker. Welcome to the show, Marco Roberts. <laughs> hey Erna, how you doing? Nice to see you, nice to see you. I'm doing well and are you currently in Queensland, Australia? So how's that going? It's going really fine. You know, I've been, I've been in Australia now for about 10 days. I had some people wow. to see here, some clients, and uh, we're just changing the world by one business at a time. Oh, yeah. No, that's, I, I love that. And I, I think the work that you are doing is so um, meaningful and so successful in terms of helping entrepreneurs become Really bad successful. connection on my side, I hope. I don't know. Oh, can you hear me? I think maybe let's, let's switch off yeah, the video. Now. Let's switch off the video, and then we'll just go to audio. Cool. Because I, yeah, I can hear you now. For the, the first five minutes went, went really well, and now for whatever reason, it doesn't. Just go yeah. ahead. Keep, yeah, keep okay, going. Yeah, okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, so we'll jump right into the questions. Tell us, who is Marco Roberts? And give us a bit of background about what you do. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's Marco Robert. A lot of people think it's Roberts, but I'm French it, Canadian. I'm so, sorry. Robert, that's okay. That's okay. Robert. I'm on my little name. list here. Robert. So, that's okay, Marco that's okay. Robert. Yes. So most of the time when people say it, I don't even correct them. It's yeah, so you're not married. You, so you're definitely not married to Julia Roberts. Now we know. No, nah, no, I <laughs> wish, I wish. <laughs> you so, will change your surname so to that. <laughs> I'm what? I said you will change your surname to that. It's like, yeah, I'm Roberts. I'm Roberts. Oh, that's it. Tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. A pretty lady, pretty woman. Yeah. No, so uh, so um, I grew up in Canada. I'm French-Canadian. And uh, at a very young age, I understood that I wanted to become a business guy. You know, like back in the 1980s when everybody wanted to go to college and, and graduate and become an engineer and a doctor. All my friends had career plans. I had yeah. business plans, you know? Yeah. So I did go to college and I graduated with a degree in the hotel and restaurant management. And awesome. after college, I worked in the industry for a few years, just long yeah. enough to, to garner enough experience and enough, enough enthusiasm to actually start my own business. So at 27, I started my wow. first business and I never looked back. I built, I built a series of businesses and uh, eventually, uh, eventually I realized that I had a knack for business and in mm -hmm. 2001, I became a business consultant. So uh, like awesome. 2018 right now, so I guess I've been doing it for a long time. Yeah. So you started as a business owner and then went to, to being a consultant, right? So yes, yes, I did. I think a big question on hand that a lot of people are wondering at the moment is in terms of you see a lot of a ton of ads on social media it's like you know are you struggling to get clients i am the consultant for you and all that type of stuff but these are all those young people and you know people are thinking like what what gives you the authority or the credibility to actually be a consultant shouldn't you build experience and then learn from the experience to become a consultant and help people what is your take on that i think i think I think there's two paths to becoming a consultant. And by the way, to me, there's a big difference between being a consultant and being a coach. So let's, let's address that first because yes, I yes. think a, a lot of the people that you're talking about, they announce themselves to be coaches, right? Yeah. To me, a coach is someone who's going to come into your business and he's going to bring his experience, his education, and he's going to give you opinions based on what yeah. he knows, right? Yeah. Yeah. So if the person happens to know a lot about your business, let's say, you, uh, you're in the restaurant business or in the hotel business or in the carpet business and the person has a background in that business, mm -hmm. it's pretty easy for them to coach you on your business. Right? Yeah. 
And again, I'm talking about a business coach. I'm not talking about a life coach or a strategic coach yeah. who's going to coach you as a human being. I'm talking about yeah. somebody who, who pertains to help you and your business. So if yeah. they're a coach, they better know about your business. Now, consultants are very different. Consultants actually use a methodology. We use a scientific analysis approach to extract data. So we also bring our education, our experience, and, and, and all of ourselves into the, the discussion. Yeah. But it starts with a complete business analysis. And that analysis allows us to extract data from the business. And then with this data, then we actually can actually make recommendations. And when a consultant makes a recommendation, they stick their neck out. They're basically yeah. staking their reputation on their recommendation. When a coach says something, typically it's like, well, that's what I think you should do. It, it's, it's an opinion. Uh, from a experience will make a recommendation or an advice yes oh okay so i have i have kind of a pet peeve associated with the millions of people who are actually out there who basically just raise their hand and announce themselves as cool. coaches business coaches particularly yeah i'll give you a, let me give you an example quickly right i was at the, i spoke at an event um i'm not even going to say where in case yeah. the person recognizes themselves but i spoke at an event a business event and mm -hmm. after the business event, I meet this person and he comes to me. So oh, you're a business coach. Whoa, me too. I said, oh, okay, awesome. Huh? I said, uh, so tell me more. Well, he said, you know, I started a couple of businesses and it didn't work. So, uh, uh, so I have another business right now. It's not working really well. So I have a full-time job, but uh, I think I'm going to become a business coach. Wow. I, I don't want to be my business just, coach. I don't want to. Did you just hear what you said, right? I mean, you can't figure it out for yourself. And now you're going to start telling other people how to do it. And sadly, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. if you're watching this, sadly, it's the majority of people out there, right? True so, so I think there are two roads that lead to uh, somebody becoming a successful either business coach or a or successful business consultant like me. Number one, you can actually go to school, get an advanced degree degree in business slash an yeah. MBA or a PhD in business or a master's degree of some sort in business. And then you can actually go and work for a big consulting firm and, you know, earn your, your grades, you know, one rank at a time. And then maybe after five or six years of doing that, now you call yourself a consultant and then you start your own consulting firm. And there's a lot of yeah. people who do that and they're really good consultants. I think the yeah. other road is like what I did is you build uh, I built uh, I built a mini empire. Mine was in the restaurant industry. I became very successful. And then what I did is I exited that and uh, I studied a little bit more how to become a consultant. I created my own framework, my own decision yeah. matrix to, ha to help me make better decisions in business, to help me uh, analyze businesses. And then, you know, I started in the industry that I was good at, the restaurant yeah. industry. And for the first four or five years, that's all I did. I I advised restaurants, and that's how I earned my own ranks, right? Yeah. And uh, yeah. and then eventually I, I branched out and I teamed up with other consultants, and then we we together we formed a consulting firm. So yeah. So I think you, those are the two routes. Yeah, yeah. So you are actually giving uh, you are a business coach based on the experience and lessons that you have learned in your own business, and now basically helping other people do the same. You know. Yeah, that was the first step. And then now yeah. I bring also a sci the science of consulting to everything I do as well. That's awesome. And now you are coaching so let me, people. Let me, just add, let, me just, let, me just, let me just add something to that, okay? Yeah. I think the biggest issue in business, in the business world, the biggest issue is that business owners are overwhelmed. They are confused. There's too many things to do. Mm -hmm. There's too many adv advisors. There's too much information out there. They don't know where to start and they don't know in what order to do what they're supposed to do. True so story. the last thing you want is somebody else, somebody to come from the outside and, and just add on to the burden. So that's not what I do at all. What I do is I analyze it and I give my clients a decision matrix. I give them a framework for making better decisions. And most of the time, in, in, ma in a matter of minutes, they are able to understand exactly what needs to happen inside of their business. Then once we agree on what they want to do inside the business, what's the next step? 
Yeah. See, most people, most people don't know what they need to do inside their business. They, they have a feeling. They're like, you know what? Everybody is on Facebook. Why should be on Facebook as well? Yeah. Not necessarily. You know, the reason why you don't have sales is not because you don't have a Facebook marketing campaign. It's because, because your product sucks or because your employees are stupid. You, you know, I'm, I'm exaggerating, but yeah. the truth is most people don't know exactly what they need. So I, what I bring is I bring to them a framework for making decisions, for looking at their business, understanding what needs to be done. Then once they get it, then we work together on, on yeah. building that. Do you, yeah, 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 yeah. Do you have um, high-level clients that actually phone you to help them make a decision? If, oh, if one, of your high paying, one of your high-paying clients has a serious problem, they give, give you a call and say, Marco, this is the problem, X, Y, and Z, what do I need to do? Yeah. <laughs> so you get All that? All the time. I really... Yeah, absolutely. All the time, right? I mean... I have clients that have, that have worked with me for six, five, six, seven years. And we, what we do is they, sometimes they just call me in the middle of the night because yeah. they don't know where I am. Yeah. Uh, sometimes we, we schedule calls. Yeah. Uh, for, for many of my clients, for many of my clients, I actually, uh, I sit on their board of advisors or their board of directors. So uh, they fly me in and, uh, yeah. a couple of times a year and then I, I attend their board meetings. So with me, there might be a, Sometimes they have a lawyer, they have an accountant, they'll have their executive team, they will have their CEO. And then together, we look at the, what are we going to do, you know, for the business going yeah. forward. Yeah. So I have more and more of those people. And I have clients who, you know, are just starting out in business and they want to figure out, you know, what, the, what are the ABCs to move their business to next exactly. level. Exactly, so. exactly. Now, when you have those high-level clients, what is the type of pressure you feel when they ask you, listen, I need, to, I need your help on this $10 million does, you know, deal decision, it can either make or break it. Do you, do you feel responsible in some kind of way or do you feel that pressure of, you know, I need to, you know, this person needs some serious help and, and they're going to listen to you and whatever you say, they're going to go with and it's either going to work or it's not going to work. Exactly. Yeah. So, so yeah, yeah. I'm going to tell you something. There's no stress on my part. I'll tell you why. Two reasons. Number one, the approach that I use for making decisions is very scientific. I have never in my life, I cannot remember me giving someone an advice and then these people following that advice and then them being wrong. I've never, I don't remember that. I don't think it's ever happened that I gave someone a recommendation and it was the wrong recommendation. Now, I remember many times I gave people recommendations. They decided not to follow my recommendations and it became a disaster. That I've yep. seen a lot of times. Yeah. Because you have to understand something. What I do is a scientific, scientific, scientific process. So when I reach a conclusion, it is most likely the best conclusion. So number yeah. one, so I don't stress about this. And number two, you know, if, if you're starting out as a consultant out there, you have to remove, you have to understand this. It's something it took me a few years to understand. Yeah. I can, I can figure it all out for my clients. I can give them the best advice in the world. But what they do with the advice at the end of the day is their choice, you know? Of course. I cannot be responsible for that. And I don't attach, I don't have any emotional attachment to that. Mm -hmm. I feel, you know, I believe in a greater world. And I believe that if somebody is doomed to make a mistake right now, mm -hmm. they're going to learn from it. You know, they're going to learn from it. And then yeah. they're, Next time, don't make a mistake. So yeah, that's the way I, I see it. Yeah, and especially when, if you're making a mistake and 99% of the time it's going to cost you money, you guaranteed that person will make that mistake again because they have learned, you know? So that's something that I've personally yeah, learned myself. Then, that's something personally I've learned myself. And think, and think about this. Yeah, of course. But then think about this. If somebody has to, a $10 million decision to make, right? Yeah. Hopefully, they just don't want to ask a person, should I make that decision or not, right? No. Hopefully, there's like, there's, a, there's, a, there's an analysis behind that. And if course, there isn't, then I, I kind of precipitate that. Yeah. So, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so for me, for what, what I basically, when I, because I, I also have coaches and everything, like I would say what the problem is and I'll give like what I think the solution would be. And then I'll like test the waters. Like, what do you think? You know? That's it. That's it. You know, I mean, you've attended some of my seminars and I always yeah. say, you know, 
don't call me and ask me how, how? you know if you want yeah. to if you want you know i make fun of it you know i say yeah. because because so many especially people who start out in business the reason why they're not successful is because they think that the answers they seek are with somebody else they think there's there's a secret out there and then somebody has the answer and then all, the reason why i haven't succeeded yet is because i don't know how no yeah. the reason why you have not succeeded yet or the reason why you are not in a place where you want to be in your business yet not because you don't know how it's because you think you need someone to tell you how and you don't what you need is you need to figure out how you need to google yeah. how you know yeah. um so my clients my clients have learned that and they don't call me and usually just say marco how do you do that and so what we do is uh, i i coach them on who they are i coach them on on the structure of their business i coach them on their mindset i coach them on on accounting on customer service on on sales and marketing i coach them on operation i they don't call me and say how do i do that they figure yeah. out how and that's why yeah. they're successful yeah. yeah and what would your best advice be for consultants looking for more clients where can they find them and should they use social media to find potential clients as a consultant Sure, absolutely. There's, there's many. So here's what you have to understand, okay? You, first of all, you have to be strategic before you are being tactic, right? Yeah. So social media is a great tactic to reach large numbers of people. But yeah. it's, not, it's, it's not necessarily the, the right tactic for everyone, right? So you have to be strategic before that. So number one, you need to understand exactly who's the audience that you want to work with. What's yeah. the direction you want to take? What's the yeah. audience? Identify a, a very tight niche. Number two, yeah. you need to ask yourself this question. What is the most important thing for the people inside of that audience? What is it that they really, 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 really want? Let me give you an example. Okay? For me, management consultant, I asked myself that question. It took me a little while, a few days. I'm like, what do they really want? Everybody who owns a business, what do they really want? Mm. I'm not going to say everybody, but I'm going to say yeah, most. it's a vast majority of them, probably over 90%. This is what they want. They want somebody who's going to come in, show them how to make more money, how to, if I can show them, if I can show my clients how to make enough money so they can retire in the next year, it's better than if it takes 20 years. That's what they want. The reason why somebody starts a business is because they have this dream of grandeur. They want something more than the average, normal, ordinary person. So if I can help them get there faster than they can on their own and faster than anybody else can help them get there, they want to work with me. So yeah. everything I do, everything I do, the way I speak, the way I design formulas, the way I bring advice to my clients, everything I do is designed to answer that one question. Marco, how can you make me millions of dollars, get me out of my business so I can sit under a palm tree and sip a Mai Tai for the rest of my life. Right? Yeah. That's, that's what I do. That's it. <laughs> and, and you know what? I think the most important- And I have fun doing it, I, by the way. Yeah, I could, I could, and you get to travel the entire world. So yeah, and, and like you say, is you need to pick yeah. your niche and identify the problem. You know, what they really want. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I tell you- then you bring I, the solution. Yeah. Once you have the problem, you know, then you have to, you have to use your brain to, to create solutions, right? So decipher yeah. a new method for them to do that. So that's what I did, right? So what I yeah. did is I created this, this thinking, this decision matrix framework to allow my clients to make better decisions so that so we can precipitate that. I mean, I could give you tons of examples of yeah. how... I have exploded businesses yeah, over the years. Yeah. So my question to that answer is that now you are, an ex, you are an experienced business coach, business owner and all of that. Now, how would a person that is 22 years old starting a consultation firm be able to do that to a business without any experience? Like yeah. that is my, and that is my yeah. deep question that I have in terms of you. I mean, we all see it on Facebook, like all these consultants popping up left, right and center. You know, how, what, what credibility or what authority do they have to actually go into a business and, you know, put their money where their mouth is? Yeah. 
So here's, here's the thing, okay? I see guys out there that I follow that are in their 20s and they're fantastic, okay? Yeah. Most people are not, okay? Yeah. Here's why. Here's what I said. I said, number one, identify a niche. Number two, understand their question. And number yeah. three, figure out a solution that only you can figure out for them. Now, if you're 22 years old, let's just be honest, right? Yeah. You just graduated from college. Most 22 years old cannot really solve the problems of an industry. They don't even know the industry. They haven't even worked in that industry. So exactly. most of them can't. Now, I'm not saying none of them because I see some of them out there that are really good and they are figuring out some shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Is it, Excuse isn't that they are, no, no, it's, no, isn't that they good or is their marketing good? Uh, yeah, sometimes it's their marketing, you know, right? So uh, one of the guys that I follow, he said, mm -hmm. the last person you want to get advice from is an online marketer because they're good at marketing. That doesn't mean they know anything about building businesses. So number one. Yeah. So I'm always wary, okay? And this is, I actually have a rule that I teach my clients. I call it learn to discern. Most business owners fail for this number one reason, because they listen to the wrong people. They cannot discern between an opinion and an advice. Yeah. You, it's, it's, the, the onus is on the business owner to discern between an opinion and an advice. If I raise my hand right now and I say I'm an international chemist and I say this is how you should actually do, create this chemical product, you better ask me a couple of questions and you're going to find out in 30 seconds flat that I don't know anything about chemistry, right? Now, if I say I'm an international business consultant and then I say, this is how you need to, this is what needs to happen in your business right now in order to take your business to the next level. You yeah. ask me a couple of questions and in 30 seconds flat, you're going to find out that I know what I'm talking about exactly. more than anybody you've ever spoken with. Yeah. So when your parents, your mother, your cousins, your neighbor, your brother are giving you, are saying, this is what you need to do. You need to ask yourself, are they giving you advice or opinions? If they're giving you an opinion, yeah. let it in and let it out. Exactly. If they're giving you advice, take it in and then decide if this yeah. is the advice that is the best for you. Learn yeah. to discern. Yeah. Now, a quick question is with all these consultants now that's coming, you know, it's becoming more competitive and all of that. How can consultants stand out? Again, again, I think, let, let me go back to the, the formula for getting clients, right? You have yeah. to identify a niche. Yeah. So you have to identify a niche and then you stand out in that niche. Yeah. You cannot, if you, if you try to solve everybody's problems, then you solve nobody's problems. So yeah. you need to be, you need to understand what you're really, really good at and what problems yeah. you're, you're solving. Then identify that niche. I could give you a, a bunch of different sectors. Like I have some of my students, okay, that actually are some of those people who want to become coaches. And then we work with niche. I have, I have one, for example, who works with women who want to become entrepreneurs. So she's identified the, 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 the reasons why some women want to be entrepreneurs. I have another one. She wants to work with, uh, Women who have issues in their relationships, issues of self-love and issues of love with their partners and things like that. Mm. So we built that. I have another one. All she does is she helps entrepreneurs start their businesses and leave their jobs, right? You have a job right now and then you're tired of working. You want to start your own business. She's the person yeah. to help you with. Yeah. I have another one. You, have a, you had a job. You started a business. You're stuck. Now you want, to, you want to move to the next level? I have another one of my clients. She, she created the Thrive Model, and she helps people who just started in business in the, last, in the last six months to a year who are stuck. She unstucks them with, by her, with using her yeah. Thrive Model. I yeah. can give you a lot of people like that. Yeah. I, probably, I, probably, I probably worked with 75 of those people you know, yeah. over the years. Yeah. yeah. So... If, if I can ask you, what are the three tips you can give to business consultants that's currently in a five-figure phase, five-figure um, earning value, to take it to six figures? What advice can you give them? Yeah. You want to move from five? Oh, from earning that's from really five figures to six figures, yeah. What, what, what okay, advice so can you give them, basically? Really good question. Really good I question. Okay. I know. This is what I'm... This, I thought about it. 
And so it, I wasn't if playing. You're, if, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Every time you and I meet, we always have a blast, don't we? Yeah, and then we do. So, all right. So this is what I want to say. Becoming successful in business is not just about learning. In fact, it's mostly not about learning new stuff, okay? Yeah. It's about becoming. It's about transforming yourself. So this is something I've, I don't think I've ever shared that in public. Usually I just, this is something I talk about only in my seminar so that you, yeah. you're going to have an exclusive right here, okay? Uh, we'll That's say. what I say. I love it. I say, I say the, the first transformation that needs to happen in order to become successful in business or in life is this. Most, most of us are born what I call normal, average, ordinary people. N-A-O-Ps, right? Normal, yeah. average, okay. ordinary people. And normal, average, ordinary people have normal, average, and ordinary lives, incomes, expectations, and results, right? Yeah. The person who makes five figures, most likely they are a normal, average, ordinary person. If you want to move up in life, the first transformation is you need to move away from being a normal person and you need to become an entrepreneur. Now, mm -hmm. I, have a, I have a different definition of an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur, yeah. see, to me, you start a business, you're a business owner. You're not an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur is someone who has a different vision on the world, different way of operating with the world, right? Let me give you the four keys to become a strong entrepreneur. Number one. Yeah. Number I'm one, it's that. emotional mastery. Yeah. Right. If, if anything that happens around the world around you affects the way you feel inside of you, you're not a real entrepreneur. Entrepreneurs don't give a shit, basically, right? Yeah. Normal, average, ordinary people, by 10 a.m., 11 a.m., they have already ruined their day because there's too much traffic, because it's raining, yeah. because the coffee is cold, because, because my, the wife forgot to put gas in the car. Whatever the reason is, Normal, average, ordinary people ruin their own life every yeah. day because they don't master their emotions. So you yeah. have to become an emotional master. Number two, you have to become a physical energy master. So you have to figure out how to have more physical energy, more stamina than normal, average, ordinary people. What do I mean by that? So I'm not going to give you a course on nutrition, but what I'm going to say is that there's a lot of people out there who can help you have more energy. And it is yeah. your job as, a, as an entrepreneur to figure out, do I need to take this vitamin or that vitamin? Do I need to, wear, to, to work out at 5 a.m. or at 6 p.m.? There is a formula for you, and entrepreneurs are amazing at identifying exactly what makes them more energetic. You have to yeah. do that. Yeah. Number three, entrepreneurs really understand what their strengths are and what their weaknesses are. And they're very good at playing life within their strengths. What I like to say is this. If you are an apple, don't try to produce orange juice. I saw that right? So you, yeah, I, I posted it today. It's kind of a coincidence, yeah. but yeah. this is something I talk about. So don't try to, don't try to be something that you're not. You know, and yeah. so many people have in their head that they have to be something, they have to achieve something, but this is not who they are. So first thing is recognize. So Albert Einstein once said something like this, and I'm paraphrasing. He said, you know, everybody is a genius, but if you ask a fish to climb a tree, you won't find a lot of genius in that, right? So I believe that every human being has the potential for a lot of success and abundance but they yeah. most people are disconnected from their true reality they don't want to admit to themselves what their strengths are or yeah. they believe they're strong in this because they've they've or they spent their entire lives trying to convince everybody around them that they were strong in this but they're yeah. not so figure out if you're an apple or an orange and then once you know which one you are extract as much juice from that fruit as you can then number three, go to the market and sell that juice like crazy, build a big business. And then once you build a business, you can retire on a tropical island. And if you want to have banana juice, apple juice, pineapple juice, grapefruit juice, I don't care what kind of juice you want, you can buy it for yourself. Yeah. But, but produce the juice that you are. If you're an apple, do apple juice. And if you're yeah. a banana or an orange, just do that juice. 
Yeah. That's number three. Number yeah. four, last one, the last, yeah. the last key to success is this. As much as entrepreneurs need to know themselves, their strengths and their weaknesses, they need to also understand human beings in general. They oh, need yeah. to understand how, you, how human beings tick. So if you think you can live in the box your entire life and become successful, you're delusional. Yeah. You have to study humans. You have to study history. You have to study economics. You have to study sociology, psychology, communication. If yeah. you cannot differentiate yourself in the sea of normal, average, ordinary people, if you, you're not going to be successful. So in yeah. every massive, successful business person I've, I've met in my life and I have spent the last 25 years interviewing those people and studying those people, they all have mastered the four keys. That makes sense? Yeah, no, definitely. So that's the first transformation. So if you, if you want to move from five figures to six figures, that needs to happen. Yeah. No, no, I love it. And you know what? Um, point number three, where you're speaking about strengths and weaknesses, that is something that I just posted on social media yesterday saying, you, you know, you need to go all in on your strengths. I am, um, my opinion, I think people ponder and give a crap too much on their weaknesses and they actually forget how, how strong their strengths are that can actually move them forward. People are always like, oh, my weaknesses, my yeah. weaknesses, but what the fuck about your, sorry, what about your strengths? Like, I go all in on my strengths. Yep. Like, I, I couldn't care yep. less. I know, I, I'm aware of my weaknesses, I'm aware of yep. them, but I don't give a shit about them. And you know what? I think it stems from that emotional mastery I'm telling you about. Yeah. You know, people are afraid to look bad. When you're not good at something, you're just not good at something. That's okay. Yeah. It's okay not to be, you, you cannot be good at everything. So find out what you're good at. Now, that, I'm going to tell you something. There's a bit of a distinction here, right? There are things in life that you have to learn. Like, for example, if you're going to, uh, if you're going to be a carpenter, well, yeah. you, you're going to you're gonna have to learn how to nail a hand, uh, nail a, hammer or nail, right? Yeah. There's a few things. If you want to be a business person and, and you're starting by yourself, you're probably going to have to learn sales. You, can, you can't say, well, that's one of my weaknesses and I'm not going to do it. No. Yeah. I mean, no. Sales is, that, that is, that is like major. Sales is major. That's major if you own a business, right? Number yeah. one. Yeah. But what business are you going to go in? You know, how are you going to play life? Well, play life within your strengths. How are you going to sell? Are you going to sell from the stage? Well, if you're a shy person like this, maybe yeah. you don't sell from the stage. Maybe you sell, you learn online. to sell online. online. There you go. Yeah. Exactly. No, I totally agree exactly. with you. And now with becoming such a successful consultant, you, you know, you are going up in the food chain, you're earning more money. And while you are doing that, you're actually generating more haters. Now, what is your advice to consultants that is currently experiencing haters and how should they handle them? Congratulations. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, congratulations. The more haters you have, the more successful you are. You know, here's the thing. I believe that, you know, whatever you do, if you don't have 3 to 10% of the audience that hates you, you're not polarizing enough. And if you're not polarizing enough, yeah. then, then, then you're, you don't have enough people who like, who like you. So yeah. the more polarizing you are, the more, the more, the more centered you are in what you believe in, well, the more yeah. people are going to hate you. Let I, them. No, 100%. Okay. No, I tell you, when I was interviewing Grant Cardone, and he said, if you don't have haters, no one knows you exist. That's, that's it. That's exactly. Because that. yeah. what success comes with haters, and it's like your job to basically produce content and produce things for people that actually like you and don't give a crap about the haters because haters will always be there. You can't, you can't, you can't change the way stupid people think. That's Absolutely. Just I want more. I want more haters. Please bring me haters. Yeah. You know what? Haters. It's like the I'm more haters I have, the, the more successful I am. Is it, do you think, do you think, and I'm talking from a, from a personal point of view, do you think women handle haters much more difficult than men handle, handling haters? I don't think you can draw a line in the sand like this. I don't think that's what it is. I think, I, I, I think a woman who is dialed in, see, okay, I'm going to go back to the concept of being an orange Emotional or an apple, mastery, right? yeah. I think a, a woman, a woman who is dialed into who she is will handle haters really well. A woman who is not 
will not. Same thing with a guy. You know, the guy who, who thinks that he, he needs to please everybody and maybe lacks a little bit of masculine energy. Well, of course, he's going to be very affected by haters. But if you're yeah. dialed in, if you know who you are, yeah. if, if, if a man is a man, he's, he's successful. He's going to so become successful. If a woman is a woman, she's going to become successful. The problem is we live in a world right now where a lot of guys are trying to become more and more feminine. They're trying to, they're trying to change the world a little bit by saying, well, this is who I need to be. Yeah. No, I mean, there's the, see, we, with the We Work movement and all that stuff, like a lot of guys are afraid to be men. Yeah. I think, see, to me, being a strong man does not mean to be a pervert or an abuser. It means to be a guidance. It means to be a father. It means to be a, a protector. That's the energy of man, yeah. right? And yeah. to be a strong woman does not, does not mean to be, uh, it, 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 to me, to be a strong woman is different. You don't want the strong woman to be like this, to be too directive. You want somebody who's connected, who understands her feeling. Yeah. It's, it's, a different, it's a different energy. And yeah. if she's strong in her energy, she's going to be successful. And if he's strong in his energy, he's going to be successful. Yeah. And your very last question um, is, if you, could get, if you could give entrepreneurs your very last business tip of your life, what would that be? Cool. My God. Only one. You like on your deathbed. You, you, yeah. You are hearing okay. flutes already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the angels are playing the flute. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is it. Okay. I'm going to tell you something. I have read a lot of literature. I've studied success a lot. And yeah. there was always something that troubled me. There was this, there was this sense of, there are people, they, they just seem to know, you know, you see this kid, he grew up in a very wealthy family and he walks, it's almost like he's walking on clouds and he becomes really successful. Or you see these people from royal families, you know, like they, they have no doubt that they're going to be successful. And I've always wondered, what is that thing that you can see it in their eyes? The people who, who become really, really successful. And one day I was listening to some guy who was explaining that they had done a study of people. They had mm -hmm. done a study to identify exactly what makes a good salesperson. And they, you know, they made some assumptions at the beginning of the study. Maybe it's the guy who makes the most phone calls. It's the person who is the most amicable, the well-groomed guy. So they, they had made some assumptions and they were flabbergasted by the answer. Yeah. The number one trait of character that will define somebody's life. The number one is how optimistic they are. Yeah. What do you believe? And, and by the way, I'm, I'm going to quote Albert Einstein again, or massacre the quote. I'm going to paraphrase Albert Einstein. He yeah. said, the level at which you believe the world to be friendly will define your outcomes in life more than anything else. So ladies and gentlemen, do you believe that the world is friendly? Do you believe that the world conspires for your success? Do you believe, do you, are you optimistic about the outcomes of your life? Those people are the people who master the world. Yeah. Yeah. That's totally. And another funny thing is I posted about optimism on Sunday evening saying what well, if there's Did one you? thing you do yeah if there's um the best strategy is be, uh, is optimism that was my quote um and i say that it you know, if, it, if it's one thing you do this week just be optimism just just be just be optimistic that's you know whatever and and i i, I had to i have to say like last week i was i had a hell of a week oh my word it's you know, it was one of those weeks. It was nothing was going, you know, the way it was planned and, you know, you started getting negative and like, no, 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 you need to keep focused. And then on Sunday night, I just said to myself, you know what? I'm going to be optimistic this week. It's going to be a great week. I'm going to reach all my goals. And oh man, it's like Tuesday afternoon and it's going amazing. Just because I changed yeah. my mind from, you know, everything's going wrong and, you know, and to I'm optimistic. So I can personally vow for that, that it does work. And to me, it's not just a, in the moment, it's, it's about who you are. And, and I was telling that a few years ago, I was telling that to uh, one of my clients who's actually a Jewish scholar. Mm -hmm. so she's, she's Jewish and she has studied the Jewish 
everything. And she said, Marco, it's funny. Think about this. She said, the Jews are the only religious group in the world, as far as she was able to ascertain. And, and yeah. again, I'm not a theologist or any Jewish scholar or anything like that. But she said, as far as I'm able to ascertain, it's the only religious group that for them, the concept of God is not, it's not an external concept. See, most religions, they see God as an external concept, right? So you're here, God is there. God is always everywhere, right? Yeah. For the Jews, as we, the way she explained it to me is that God is inside of them. God is, they are a part of God. They are an expression of God and more than any other religion. Well, now look at the world in general, right? I think the Jews have, have done pretty well in the world. Right? And this yeah. is what she said. She said, maybe that's one of the reasons why the Jews have done really, really well in the world historically. Uh, because what? Because they believe that they are an expression of God itself. They believe that the universe is expressed through them. In other words, yeah. they are more optimistic than anybody yeah. else. Right? Yeah. The, 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 at least that's, that's, that's how she explained it to me. And I'm like, mm-hmm. it makes a lot of sense to me. So, Nothing will define your life more than your level of optimism. We could draw a line and say the person who is this much optimistic will have this amount of success in life. The person who is this optimistic will have this yeah, amount of success. No, because yeah. nothing will kill your endeavors more than doubt. So when yeah. you have zero doubt, the sky's the limit. Oh, I, I love it. That's how you, you just needed, you just needed a, 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 a mic, like do the mic drop, you know, <laughs> with your hands up, uh, up there. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> the water drop. Margo, thank you so much for coming onto the show. And I'm so excited for our listeners to actually uh, watch this and listen to this very soon in a few days. We'll, it will be up. Thank you once again for your time. Wishing you safe travels through Geneva. Yeah. Um, and yeah, th- once again, thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Can, I, can I give myself a plug? Yeah. Can I give, can I give myself a plug? I have a book that's about to come out this year. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The business so where, where can people get, yeah, where can people get all the coming people? out this year? Yeah, go for it. Go for it. It's you. Okay. Well, so people can find me on LinkedIn, right? So linkedin.com forward slash I N forward slash Marco. M-A-R-C-O, Robert, R-O-B-E-R-T. Yeah. Uh, you can find me at meetmarcorobert.com. You can find me at marcorobert.com. You can find me at coachmarcorobert.com. Those are all some of my websites that where people can find me. And I'm, all, I'm always and it, all around the world. <laughs> so somewhere up in the air between yeah. Zurich and Singapore or San Francisco and, and Instagram. New York. Are you on Instagram or Twitter? I am on both of them on Twitter. I am at Campionese, that's C-A-M-P-I-O-N-E-S-E. I've had that for a long time. Okay. And on Instagram, I think it's just Marco Robert, so, oh, or cool. I Marco Robert or something. Like that. Perfect, so, perfect. Yeah. Uh, thank you again. Thank you so much. And, and the book, where is it coming out? Uh, we're working with the editor probably by the end of the year, December. That's what we're oh, shooting cool. for. And what is the book all about? The book is about transforming yourself. You know, what I understood a long time ago is the people who become successful transform themselves to different levels. And that's what the book is about. The book is, is me shaking your cage a little bit and, and forcing you to the next level of transformation that's going to help you achieve more in business. That's why the book is called The Business Intervention. Oh, I love it. That's really good. We'll definitely keep an eye on for that. We'll make sure all the links goes on to the YouTube uh, channel as well so they can meet you directly on your website. And again, thank you so very much for coming on. I appreciate it. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. All right. I'm going to stop recording, but don't go off yet. Okay. Thank you. Bye. You've been listening to the Woman Entrepreneur Podcast, the number one success platform for female entrepreneurs. Visit our website, womanentrepreneur.co, for your daily motivation and business growth expert advice. Until next time, play big, think big, and impress yourself.